Right, let's get on to it. Perseus, P-R-U. So, good news story. Pumping out cash, great quarterly. Let's get into it. Perseus. Trav, what's the go there, mate? Batty, it's about time we had a good news story in the ASX gold space. I feel like a lot of my uh, my segments on ASX gold companies have been very negative, Nancy, and I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to be able to talk about one that isn't. Um, okay, and it's good to fly, fly the flag that you're not a very negative person, <laughs> Trav. There is some positivity in you, so there, this is there good. Is, there is, yeah. You got to look deep for it sometimes, but uh, there is there is a bit of um, <laughs> bit of hope for us all, Maddie. And Perseus is a worthy five hundred thousand ounce plus gold producer that um, you know I'll, I'll give credit to. In this March quarter, they've come out and they've produced one hundred thirty thousand ounces of ounces of gold, um, and an all in sustaining cost of US nine hundred and seventy one bucks per ounce. With a cash margin of US 850 bucks an ounce, or an operating cash flow of US 111 million bucks in the quarter, they've they've, they've reiterated that they're on track to achieve their cost and production guidance. Um, and and keep in mind, this company they've got their three operating mines: Yayore and Sisingwe in Cote d'Ivoire, and then Edikan in Ghana. I'm, I'm proud you pronounce them. I looked at them. I would have had no hope. So well done there, Trav. Thanks, mate. I think I've listened to uh, to Jeff Quartermain say the names before, so they've stuck in my head. <laughs> um, however, so their, their key development project that this company has is the uh, Myas Sand Gold Project, and that was previously called Block 14, located in the north of Sudan and, you know, Perseus, they're gearing up for a final investment decision on that project in the second half of this calendar year. So they've got US 471 million bucks of cash at the end of the quarter. They've got no debt, but they do have um, an upsized revolving credit facility for US 300 million bucks. So the, the current cash balance, you know, in Aussie dollar terms is, is about $700 million. Um, combine that with that, you know, US 300 million of, of, of available credit to draw upon nimbly. So that if they so should choose it, that's a lot of liquidity to, to, to act so um, well, a bit over a billion available funds at their disposal. Yeah, totally. And keep in mind, their debt capacity is probably more than that um, revolvable credit facility. They, you know, if 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 the right opportunity came along as well, given the fact that they're just pumping out cash at the moment. And so, you know, but but the fact that they upsize that re- revolving credit facility, in my mind, to me, is a bit indicative that this company is hungry from an M and A perspective. Um, and keep in mind that you know the way that. Perseus have created value historically is by acquiring development projects and then building low cost mines. Um, and you know it'll be like like let's look through you know the last sort of five years they acquired Amara, which is now their Yayore gold mine in 2016. They acquired Exore in 2021, Orca Gold in 2022, and that Orca Gold is is their current key development project, the Myas Sand Gold project. When, when you look at the, the CapEx number that's in the market for that project, um, the numbers that were put out in the 2020 DFS were about US 300 million bucks. So when you look at their current cash and their available facilities, um, they're not going to need all of that in order to build their key development projects. So I think they're probably hungrier for even more development projects. Um, and, and when I look at the ASX names out there, you know, because this this company creates value by acquiring un- undeveloped projects, I'm not thinking WAF. I'm thinking more like a, a predictive, um, and, and their Bankan projects in in Mali or or, or an Orcorp, and, and theirs is in Tanzania, which is a different risk profile in and of itself. But but you know, and there's a whole bunch of other TSX and other names out there with with undeveloped African gold projects. But I'm watching them from an M and A perspective. So be, you've listened to a lot of Jeff stuff. Uh, <laughs> I what's, think I've what's said, his? What's his? I guess what's their strategy? In they are limiting themselves to Africa only long term. I can't. I can't speak for what Jeff's strategy long term here is, but you know the thing that differentiates Perseus is they back themselves to be able to build good relationships with government and stakeholders in hard to navigate countries and that strategy has worked well for them where they've created outsized shareholder value because they've actually been able to execute on that where other people have have stumbled. Yeah, I think that'll be really interesting to see how they navigate Sudan. That's a country I'm 
quite unfamiliar with in terms of uh, as a mining jurisdiction. Well, they're, they're, quick, they're quick to point out that it's only 75 kilometres south of the uh, Egypt border. <laughs> yeah, so Egypt is a country with a few good operating gold mines. So it would be interesting that the company obviously has a great track record of managing jurisdiction risk and they've done a phenomenal job. So Trav, you said WAF doesn't draw your attention to possible M&A with them. Why is that? What's, it could what's, do. Your, what's your indicator there? Look, it could do. I mean, every time that Perseus has acted from an M&A perspective, they've acquired a single undeveloped project and then they've built that project into a mine. Um, and that's, that's what's created so much value. WAF, yes, there is an attractive undeveloped project there. So it may, maybe it does make sense. But they've already, you know, built an established mine, um, and, and so they're kind of they're not able to kind of deliver on their the strategy that's worked for them so well historically in the same way that they they have historically. I think it's a different equation. But you know, given the fact that there is this great looking undeveloped project there now, maybe maybe it does make sense.